Well, folks, this is it. The Ferrari F8 Spider. The latest and greatest mid-engine Ferrari, and honestly, probably the last of a breed. Like the 458 Speciale was the last of the naturally aspirated mid-engine V8 Ferraris. This twin-turbo V8 mid-engine Ferrari will probably be the last that doesn't have hybrid power. Speaking of power, 3.9 liter twin-turbo V8. The international best engine of the year, 2016, 17, 18, and 19. Four years in a row. So when the F8 Tributo came out, the coupe version of this car, that's why it has the name Tributo. It's a tribute to that V8 engine. And what a thing that engine is. 710 horsepower, 710. All to the rear wheels, there's no all wheel drive, there's none of that shenanigans. It's a rear wheel drive car. All of that power is routed through a seven speed double clutch gearbox that right now I have an automatic. Ew, you say automatic. Yeah, but I'm just cruising around. I'll even hit the soft button. The Magneto Rheological dampers just smooth everything out. This car is not a carbon fiber tub. It's an aluminum based chassis. You would think it's not quite as strong as some of the carbon fiber stuff that's out there, but you'd be wrong. You'd be also oh wrong. It's a very firm chassis. Well, you can detect just a little bit of bend flex in the chassis when you go over some pretty significant bumps. They have to be significant to get that flex. This chassis is quite strong and quite able. And when you put this little shock button on here, which they literally call bumpy road, everything just soaks right up. When you push this little bumpy road button, you might as well be driving a Lexus. But this is not a Lexus. This is a Ferrari. No bumpy road, no sport mode. Flip that Manatino to race. <laughs> and race. Because that is the point of this car. So Ferrari's been doing open top V8 coupes since 1977 with the 308. And if you've got a car that sounds as good as this, that drives as good as this, don't you want to be a part of the environment? Yeah, you lose just that little bit of structural rigidity. Just a little bit. But you get to hear the engine, you get to feel the air, feel the warmth of the sun. It's just a really special experience, something that a coupe just can't provide. This car is about 150-ish pounds heavier than the F8 Tributo Coupe on which it is based. But with the Spider, you get the best of both worlds. Why? Because it's a hardtop convertible. It's a two-piece hardtop that flips over this. And you can open and close it up to about 30 miles an hour. It takes about 14 seconds, according to Ferrari. So let's see. As long as you're under 30 miles an hour. Here we go. There you go. Hard top rough. Best of both worlds, coupe and convertible, all in one car. It doesn't get much better than that. You can also put the top back down while driving. And you know, why wouldn't you do that? Because then you get to hear. that gloriousness. They took things that they learned with the 488 Challenge car for aerodynamics, like this big S-duct that's on the front of this car, defining feature. 
they changed the inlets around the headlights. The 488 had sort of these stacked, almost bug-like headlights. This has horizontal LEDs. The entire rear end has been redesigned. There's now four tail lights instead of two. But more so than lighting up the back end are the aerodynamics. They moved the air intakes for the engine from the flanks of the car to the rear of the car. It actually improves the breathing, which improves power. Let's say get up to that 710 horsepower thing. And I don't know, I kind of feel like if I bought a Pista, I'd be a little pissed off that Ferrari did this car so quickly on the heels of that car. So one of the cool things you can do in this car, because everything is geared right towards the driver, the way it should be. But if you're a passenger over here, like you can't even see the radio because there's two screens on the side of this monster tag that's right in the middle. So like if you want to tune the radio and you're sitting over here, you can't see anything. So there's an option for that. You can get right in front of the passenger here, a digital screen that has four different modes in it. You can watch what I have right now is performance mode where it shows the tack so that the passenger can see how foolish you're being. Um, or you can do the radio and all sorts of stuff. It's a touch screen. It's actually a touch screen for the passengers. That's cool. That's really cool. So like every Ferrari, there's this awesome steering wheel, Formula One derived. You've got your lights up here at the top of the steering wheel that light up as you're going up the RPMs. It's like a rev limiter in the steering wheel. It's so cool. Your turn signals are little buttons for your thumbs. The headlights are over on the left side. The wipers are on the right side. Your engine start and stop button is on the left side. Then you've got this Manatino button that allows you to adjust the driving mode. And you start in sport. It's an F8. There's no like comfort or any crap like that. You start in sport. This is a Ferrari, baby. And that has all the nannies on. Plus their side slip control, which is now in version 6.1. So it's super smart. The further up the Manitino you go, the more play you get in the back end of this car. The more the reins are let loose for you to really be in charge of the car. If you want to look like a hero, you put it in race. And you let the nannies kind of save your ass, honestly. It's not going to let you spin the car. It's not going to let you crash the car unless you're a complete moron, which I'm trying not to be today. that in a press kit, I'm like, I call BS, right? I lean on the throttle and there's no freaking turbo lag. I don't think they were lying. Holy stuff! There's a couple things this car does really well. Goes, stops, handles. I guess that's three things. What else do you want in a sports car? Mileage? I don't care. I'll fill this up every day if I have to. I mean, are you kidding me? No, you're not kidding me, are you, Ferrari? You're not kidding me at all. You're dead serious. Paddle shifters, oh my gosh. They run behind the steering wheel, they're carbon fiber. They're great to look at, but you don't really get to see them because the steering wheel's in the way, but I don't care. You know, the brakes are good. They're solid, but they're not, you can't modulate them quite as well as I want to. Like you can't feather like touch them, just scrub off a little bit of speed. You really gotta dig into them before there's the reaction I'm looking for. And that makes it not quite as interactive as I want it to be, but they do work. And they have to when the car tops out at over 211 miles an hour. You gotta kinda have good brakes. Oh, that noise. The shifts are so fast. There's definitely a, 
an acknowledgement that you've shifted. It lets you know there's a, a, a jerk to it. It's not as harsh as like in an Aventador, their ISR, their independent shifting rod, but it feels like if I'm doing a really quick shift with a manual transmission, just boom, slam that thing in. But they're still quicker than I could be. But you can't do it right now because I'm stuck in traffic. And I guess that's one of the downsides. Other people and traffic. Like I feel I would have to bring this car to a racetrack at least once a month to make sure that it exercised its abilities properly. But I am honestly blown away with the quality, the build, the engine, the suspension, the transmission, the car. The F8 Spider is truly something special. Bellissima. Que bella.